All right, we got everybody. Uh, we ready to to jump back into the game? Yeah, I'm ready. Hold on, let me start this 3D print. <laughs> <laughs> it's better. You can't hear it, right? Uh, no, I don't hear uh, it. Yeah, I think it's fine. All right, here we go. Hello, and welcome to Plus One to Gaming. I'm Chris. And I'm Eric. I'm Billy. And I'm Mark. And we're jumping into our sixth session of A Deep and Creeping Darkness. Mark, do you want to give us a quick recap and take us back into the game? Definitely. During our last game, um, our adventures awoke to some excitement in the Ichthu camp where they had spent the night. Inopi, the young girl of the Ichthu, the clan that they had been taking care of had snuck off in the middle of the night. Uh, she scrambled <clears throat> up a rock side investigating lights in the sky. She returned with a few grainy snapshots of floating scanner droids and showed them to everyone in the morning. They were immediately recognized as Circa brand mining droids. Since the party had had good conversation the night before, um, the clan had learned that you were on assignment from a mining group, and Ifrink offered her notes on the surrounding area after they had crash-landed so that you could hopefully avoid the droids by taking an alternate route and bypassing the river altogether. You made a long and arduous journey through rocky crags, but made it, albeit exhausted finding Vermilion abandoned and dilapidated, just as everyone had said and you expected. Arik wandered through the graveyard th uh, at the edge of town and found Lorna, who was Lucas Grosvenor's wife, her gravestone, and ended up leaving her the bouquet of dried flowers that she brought from town. The party carried on and went to examine the largest manor in the center of town, and it was there that strange occurrences started. There were flashes in the corner of Gup's eyes, strange sounds on the wind, thumps in the floors above, as you were in the manor house. Gup was nervous and um, investigated the area surrounding the house and found nothing except some old mining equipment, empty buildings, and peculiar piglet squeals. After there were some more sounds in the house, um, Gup returned and quickly cleared, again finding nothing upstairs. Um, exhausted and seemingly confused as to what was happening, the party put RX at the front door for night watch and um, each picked a room on the second floor to sleep off their exhausting day. However, in the middle of the night, they were struck by terrible and awful nightmares. And that is where we pick up today. What kind of nightmares do we have? We get to find out in the macro section, there should be a rollable table. So um, you can choose your own or uh, use the table if you hadn't thought of anything previously. Jesus. Uh-oh. That'll be a fun one. <laughs> Gupt. Okay, so we got all of those in. So in the middle of the night, probably somewhere near the morning, everyone is still struggling through these nightmares. You're having flashes from throughout your life, um, different moments of reality and surreality, uh, things that just aren't quite right or don't seem to fit what you remember. Um, and of course... They all have that sickly, nightmarish feeling of something being off, even in mundane situations. If anyone would like to volunteer to go first, I'll roll in that extra inspiration offer, um, since you'll be jumping straight into role play, or we can like do a roll off if you don't know who you want to go first. I thought of a quick, uh, quick one, uh, just like the dream that they had that we had. Yep. So um, Bidu is in the uh, the room in the northeastern corner of the building that had the desk in it, and he's thrashing around on the bed having the following visions and nightmares. Yeah, so Bidu is um, piloting a spaceship, 
and he is on the run. He is um, being chased by Republic scientists or by Republic um, officers after a job had gone bad, and they're shooting at him, and he's desperately trying to to fly and escape, but he's in just a you know like a small you know shuttle, and lasers are exploding around him, the shields are failing, and then you know a, a seeker missile comes and just the end of the dream is that implosion as the compression of the lack of gravity um, just like implodes the whole ship as it explodes and he wakes up just as like he dies in his dream and wakes up in a in a cold sweat wow, that was an intense one being you okay cool um, if you didn't have inspiration take that already and then Auric is she prepared I mean <laughs> I guess so our extreme, she is in what she feels like several different places at once, but really none of them actually um, feels like she's at home, feels like she's back in cadet school out on a, a field mission. Um, there are several people kind of around her milling, doing what seem to be normal things, but things that don't don't actually line up with with anything in reality. Um, she keeps trying to talk to them and ask what's going on. Hey, I haven't seen you in a while, whatever. And none of them will like turn toward her as she moves her body to try to face them. It seems like their body like perfectly parallels hers to turn away so she can never see a face. Um, this drives her to kind of some, a little bit of desperation to where she wants to like i need to talk to somebody i have to i have to see a face um so she grabs onto somebody's shoulders and turns them around and it is still the back of of the person um it is none of these people have have faces and she can't can't discern why and all of a sudden gets terribly afraid um tries to run away but really can't run feels like she's running in very high gravity um none of these figures want to hurt her but she feels like they do none of them are acting as if they are um, so she pulls out her viber blade dagger to fend them off but can't help but turn it toward herself and start stabbing damn amazing okay gupt up next so in Gup's nightmare, he's actually in the building that they're in right now. So it, it's extra creepy. He he gets up out of his bed and he he walks out of his room uh, and he he looks into each of the rooms uh, and he sees uh, Bidu sleeping. He checks over. He sees Auric sleeping. He goes into another room. He sees uh, somebody he had protected. Uh, in his past uh, job, the the small bureaucratic officer that he was just protecting, um, and he's confident. You know, he's he's doing his job as bodyguard. Um, but as he's checking on these people, uh, he he hears a a a yelp, and he uh, runs to Bidu's room where he's come from, and and Bidu is no longer there. He just sees. A streak of blood heading out the window, and then one by one, he hears those same sounds um, in each of the other rooms. And as he's running around, he he just he is he is failing his bodyguard job, but he he doesn't know what he can do. He it's not something a threat that he can face directly, and he he hates that. Like he's failing due to no part of his own failure it's just failing and there's nothing he can do about it and he's getting angrier and more frustrated as one by one his current and past you know uh wards the people that he's been sworn and paid to protect are just being killed or vanished or he doesn't know but he's he wakes up and like with a cold sweat and uh, as he wakes up, he, the first thing he does is he runs over to each of the rooms to check on everybody. 
Hola, Glapt. Hey, Gupt. Having trouble sleeping? Gupt just snorts a little bit and um, just lets him know. Standard security check. Don't worry about it. Um, but you can see that his, uh, his posture has relaxed a little bit when he sees you. Gupt, um, you say that there's a standard security check and Bidu seems to be more more comfortable and you go back into your room and uh, when you get there, you see the same blood streaks and broken window as if you were drug out in the middle of the night somehow. Make a um, check for me, but let me make sure I get it right. Hold on a sec. So Bidu, um, you are... You're there and that there's a huge bright flash of white as that um, explosion happens. And um, you you look up and realize that there was a bright white you were seeing was coming from like a, an expansive white tile floor. Everything around you is just complete and, and utter darkness, but there's a bright white light emanating from over your shoulder and a whole bunch of ships fly in from strange angles. There's Republic soldiers everywhere and they start barricading you in, making a maze out of jail bars, workbenches, laboratory equipment um, that just seems to come from nowhere. And they start evaporating when they're done. Gupt, um, your check is a um, make a wisdom saving throw, please. I still had it on disadvantage, so it would be just the 16. I forgot to switch it off. Because I'm rested now, I would assume. Okay, and Arik, um, you have um, this vision where it feels incredibly realistic. You seem to wake up back at camp that you were at before, and it's the middle of the night, but somehow you can see in the darkness, and um, you're standing on a rocky scramble, and everything else is just an endless black. You see Anopi. She's running up the rocks in front of you, and they're kind of skittering under her feet. She has a pair of uh, monoculars and a data pad, and um, you see she's like running straight towards a huge looming boulder that's very precariously teetering, um, and you notice there's a bright white light coming from over your shoulder. Am I active in this? Yes. How far away is she from me? She's quite far um, in front of you, maybe 60 feet. Okay, so um, I, I start to run toward her and, and yell, yell her name and tell her to stop because I don't want, if the boulder falls, I don't want her to be within its like range, I guess. She doesn't seem to be able to hear you, or maybe your voice just isn't coming out. And um, you run forward. The boulder starts tumbling down. She's kicked loose too much earth, and it's coming straight down towards both of you now. Um, and you manage to somehow miraculously get up the scramble in front of her. The boulder hits you. You put your hands out, and... It cracks and crumbles and just bursts. It hovers in the air for a second before it covers you both. And you see in front of you just like a long maze of rock with a path through. Bidu, you're still standing in front of a maze of equipment and jail bars. There's a bright white light coming from over your shoulder. Uh, I think Bidu turns towards the bright light and looks toward it it looks like almost like a classic archway door portal with a beaming whiteness emanating from it it looks very soft the, the light coming out so i think shielding his eyes uh using his hand he uh kind of bewilderedly and sleepily walks toward the uh that, that arch that light you feel like you can't move at first, and it's that dreamy sleepness of concrete legs, and you force it a little bit. It becomes slightly 
easier. And then when you get towards the light, there's a strange almost doorway um, in your mind where you see the room where you fell asleep. It's almost like that moment of walking into the room right before you went to bed. You go to it and make a wisdom saving throw. Three. So you get, you can see the outline of that room um, and you get to it. And when you get towards the, the edge of your, your dreams and your waking state um, to actually move through is one of the most difficult things you've ever felt. It's like you're cemented into this dream. Um, it takes everything for you to fall to your knees and crawl the last inch to feel the sense of tumbling out of this portal. And that is the sensation of falling you feel when you jerk awake in the northeastern bedroom of the manor house you went to sleep in and you are absolutely exhausted in the night you suffered one level of exhaustion but as a note because we don't use this very often you slept all night so you only have one not two okay. gupt you have a the similar sensation of waking where you just know that you can come awake. You had that, that dream where you hopped out of bed to check on Bidu, and um, that's given you this control over your body and your dreaming state. Um, you feel the pull to stay in that dream, but it's partly negated by a faint clicking sound that starts to get louder and louder and you hear it and you recognize it as your mind temple armor. <laughs> Running pins from the back of your head to the front of your skull in a chevron pattern and then it reverses and comes back. You slept through the night and um, were able to avoid all of the exhaustion from fighting your way back to consciousness. So I'm... Um... <clears throat> I'm awake, like fully awake, awake now. You are. So I don't see the the glowing board or anything. I don't see any of these these weird uh, the blood trails or anything, you know, because he's he's still a little cautious when he wakes up. Uh, he's going to go and you know slowly check and, and see if he sees any other weird things that he he's going to do a perception check. He may not, you know, just just to see if if he sees anything else out of place that could lend him to be another dream or or something in the dream manifested. It's an eight. Not great. You, um, you're covered in like a heavy sweat and you can see, even though the room and the bed you're on wasn't well made by any means, you can tell that um, in the night you've been, you know, almost thrashing, rolling around. Um, you know, your armor's a little askew on you. It's not, you haven't been sleeping soundly, so you're confident that this is a reality. You feel um, the adrenaline that you recognize from past battles, and when that fear kicks in, you're definitely awake. All right. And, um, do you want me to wait to, for my actions until everybody else is done with, the, with this uh, role play? Sure. Um, Bidu, a similar situation for you. You can tell that you are definitely awake now because that um, feeling of exhaustion is just like <gasps> coming out of out of this waking nightmare and um, being like, oh, like I have not slept well. You are confident that you are awake as well. Yeah, I think his head pounding, he uh, sits up, takes out some of that fish soup that he stashed from when they were in town and uh, sips on it to kind of nurse what maybe feels like a really bad hangover. Would Bidu be able to use something like a Colto pack or something to alleviate the exhaustion? Hmm. Um, do a medicine check to see if Bidu can hack away to make that work for me. So um, you, you have a ge genius. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I think I might actually use my inspiration for that. Ah, okay. So 12. So you, you wake up with your 
and you, for some reason, have a genius idea to try that out. Um, so you grab a uh, Colto pack from your bag and fiddle with it for a few minutes. Um, and you feel better and a little sticky from trying to use a topical cream. Um, but you're still you're still really tired. So it was not effective. Is that what I'm reading? Yes. Gotcha. It's not effective. Um, Arik, you are wandering through this maze of rock. It is like a literal labyrinth um, in your dream state. And eventually you find your way to a hole um, that looks like an archway with bright, soft white light coming from it. And as you walk towards it, you start to feel um, a sucking feeling at the back of your head, like you need to to wander back into the maze. Make a wisdom saving throw. Four. Yikes. So you turn around and start to head back. You doubt the path you had chosen, and you make the third right-hand turn and then three lefts, and then you go a few more corridors down and feel a pull to go some other direction and you find another portal and you go to that one and struggle your way out through the the bright white light and you wake up you are exhausted so you had no exhaustion yesterday because uh, mm-hmm. of the warm wind from Lorna's grave so you have one level of exhaustion as you awake outside of the manor house. I wake up outside? Yes. There's a dull glow coming from seemingly inside the mangled tree with no leaves in front of the manor house. You, When you get to that portal, you see not the room that you went to sleep in. You see the abandoned town So you wander to that. It seems to be your best option. And as you force your way through and feel that exhaustion overtake you, you hear a strange sound. It sounds like somehow the mixture of whipping winds and ripping flesh. And it starts to manifest and out of the shadows pulls long gangly claws one at a time and an arm comes out its paw sinks into the dirt in front of you and another emerges you see yellow eyes form next and the whole shadow seems to pull away from all of the mangled branches of the tree being cast on the ground and there is a black beast with large pointed elbows. It looks almost webbed um, in its joints and fingers, million sharp white teeth and a long black tail whipping around. It's crawling towards you and you feel that feeling of pulling and um, dream exhaustion that was trying to keep you in the maze. is coming for you from this beast. So Arik is used to being on back worlds and weird places and knows that animals and beasts are oftentimes the biggest threat. Um, so she pulls her blaster um, and fires a shot at the animal, at the monster thing. It um, It's coming pulling its way out of the shadows you you pull out your blaster pull up to aim go to take a shot and it seems like it it walked through reality and stepped into one of the other shadows it disappears for a moment and then it reappears even closer to you stepping again out of another shadow and everybody should roll initiative okay Anybody over 20? No, 14, 8, and 5. Oh, I should probably roll for my uh, 
droid too. Six for Bidu's droid. Okay. Oh, that's what I'm missing. Do you want to roll for RX, Eric? I, I think RX is supposed to go on my turn. Oh, okay. Okay, so first up is the terrible black beast. Okay, Eric, um, you have a another wisdom saving throw um, as the beast lurches for, forward towards you. You can just see how terrible and ugly it is, and it exudes this deep, disconcerting fear aura at you. Ooh, 20. I ain't scared of no weird exuding fear. Yeah, you've um, been so just brought so sober from the fear of the dreams that the adrenaline is pumping and it's just you are not afraid of this thing at all. And uh, you've already pulled out your blaster and started to try to shoot at it. So no effect there. And it will run towards you and it is going to attempt to claw you with its giant black obsidian claws. So it um, rears back and from the ground up thrust an uppercut claw that um, catches you across your your cape, but in the darkness, uh, it didn't get a good bead on you and it, it misses. Okay, so um, it, it attempts that claw and then uh, that is all that it can do. So that brings us to Auric and RX and then Gup, or no, Bidu is after that. Um, all right, so Ark is the one that's in kind of immediate danger, and I guess I'll set the precedent that Ark goes first. No, like, because I don't know if I get to choose. It just says that they go on my my turn. So Ark has her blaster out, and she's not really concerned with like being humane or anything to this monster beast. Um, so she tries to shoot it in the face. Okay. So that looked like it was a a, a natural 20. <laughs> oh, fuck. Not 20. Although it's not green. Oh, yeah. It's just plus 7. Yeah, that's my to hit. That's my attack bonus. Oh, so you were 13 plus 7. Okay. Well, still, it's pretty good. That's, uh, that's good still roll. pretty great. And so hang on. I tried to roll damage, and it just rolled the same thing. I think you clicked the word blaster underneath the 20 rolled. Ah, okay, cool. 1d8 plus 8, that doesn't seem like is going to be 6. Okay, it's a 3. 1d8 plus 3, not 8. That makes more sense. 3 plus 3, 6 damage. Right, so, um, yeah, you you pull whip shot from your holster again when it pops back into view. You take a shot, and um, it's a blow straight across its... Uh, the hide on its back, on its spine, and it, you hear it snarl um, and growl at the pain. Can you guys see that thing I just clicked? Wire yep. binders? Okay, I, I was trying to hover over my spells to see what they are, but they're named Star wars -y. So I'm like, I don't know what any of these do. And the only way that yeah. I can read them apparently is... I didn't think about that. I renamed all of them for flavor reasons. I like it. Okay, never mind. There's another button that I can I can drop down to read what they do. Disregard wire binders. Okay, jumping back inside the house, um, we are at Bidu, who has awoken from his terrible nightmares. Is each one of these squares five feet? It is. Okay. Uh, I guess hearing the commotion and blaster and outside... Bita will go out to that window. 30. I guess I'll use cunning action to dash. And can I see Oric out there? Yes, out of the window, you can see um, Oric standing, her blaster held straight out in front of her, a little smoke coming out of the end of the barrel. And she's kind of whipping her head back and forth like she's in a defensive stance uh, and keeping an eye out. Bidu's eyes search for a threat and lays on, lands on the uh, 
black monster down below. Uh, he looks at his uh, DH-17 WRN and toggles a switch and shoots a uh, sapping sting at the monstrosity. It must make a constitution save of 13. It does. It saves? It does save. Okay. So um, you you notice when you run into the room that there's... Um, in the room, this is the room where Arik was sleeping. There's a, a streak of, of some blood and a little bit of um, damage and everything. The window's busted out. That's how you can see so easily out of it and shoot so quickly. It looks like she was drug out the window. Um, and you lose sight of the monster as it dips in and out of shadows and your bolt sparks off the ground a few feet from, from Arik and misses. Bidu curses. Gupt has heard um, a blaster bolt go off and then Bidu dashed through through the room and another bas- blaster bolt has gone off. You're sitting in your room in the corner of the manor. Gupt is going to immediately turn um, I assume there's a window in this room, too, facing outside. There is. Gupt is going to jump out that window. I know it's the second floor, so probably over a 10-foot drop. Uh, but he's just going to jump out, um, try to make an athletics check mm-hmm. so that he is maybe either takes less damage or can continue his movement when he's on the ground, when he lands, I would assume. That's his goal. He doesn't really care if he gets hurt. He just wants to be able to get to the creature. Nice. So in a... In a frenzy, he bursts through the window, not even bothering to open it, and uh, make that athletics check. 13. So um, Gupt is no stranger to these kinds of combat maneuvers. Um, He lands heavily on the ground, um, not into the full front tuck roll he was expecting to burst forward, but um, does not fall prone. Just a third three-point landing, well executed. All right, so I'm not super close to him still, but is that all my movement? Yeah, so you you burst out the window, land um, about here outside, um, and you have... um, We'll call that difficult terrain having come out the window. So you've got another half speed to go. You landed pretty well. All right. Well, if I can continue, I mean, I have 30 feet of movement. It was only five feet to the window. Um, So if I can continue with that same movement, he's going to get move that, you know, diagonally up. Is that okay? So in the same movement action? Yeah, you can. uh, you can still rush forward with the rest of your movement. All right, so it'll take 20, there's another 20 feet to get 10 more feet um, in the difficult terrain. And he's going to, um, <clears throat> after seeing all these horrors and he's, um, and and uh, and the nightmare, he's just so unsettled that he is going to just hit him with everything he has, which he's going to rage and he's going to, do his reckless attack so he just he's going to do two attacks um attack and then and then uh a bonus attack so he'll do two first attack second attack is a bonus action your first attack hits all right i the second attack i i'm raging so i don't know how to add it but i should get um yeah i don't know how to add the extra damage so we'll see so it'd be plus two to that. So it'd be 18 damage to this creature. So the um, the creature is thrashing and coming at Arik. It doesn't see you come bursting out of the window and rush around these old um, mining facilities, buildings. So you get a bit of a jump on it. You come up and take your great axe, bringing it heavy down towards... Um, the neck of of the creature and there's just a terrible vicious howl um as your blade sinks in you feel it grip 
into the beast and it's it's almost difficult to pull it out you almost can't even get it back out and it kind of loses the use of that whole shoulder and leg almost and it kind of limps is away from you a bit um now seeing that you're there and, and a major threat to it and um it looks like you almost just cleave straight through it and that brings us back to the top of the round could my droid get a turn as well it's, oh it rolled initiative six right he got six so actually he probably should have gone before gup sorry about that but yeah he can go Cool. Uh, it floats out the window and kind of down where Auric and Gupt are, and it will use the help action to uh, help Auric on her next attack by shooting it, zapping it with those little Jedi training bolts. Kind of floats around. That's what it'll do. Okay, so uh, Auric hears the droid come flying out the window, and it uh, starts to circle around her um getting ready the beast um it drags its foot back towards it like almost um like it's in a sling holding it up up against its body there's just blood pouring out of that side it's it's wincing and wailing um and it it turns to look at gupt and you can see if a beast of you know nightmares could look afraid um maybe you have become this thing's nightmare this night and it takes a few steps backward and is enveloped into shadows and you hear this wind and ripping sounds and the beast disappears yeah i don't know what the blast that was but i woke up out here and that little creature was awful pissed at me good thing y'all got here because i couldn't really get a beat on it Arik, you notice that um you're hurt there's some claw marks down like your leg and kind of cutting into your leather boots um you're bleeding a little and you can tell that's where this thing had grabbed you and and drug you out uh the window while you were sleeping yeah i don't think i really want to be out here anyway for that i don't there might be more of those things gupt is still raging you see his rage lasts for a while and he doesn't want to stop raising just in case that thing comes back. So while you guys are calm, kind of calmly talking around, he's you know just see him pacing around the area looking for this creature. He just wants to finish him off, uh, and he does so for a, the rest of the minute that he's raging. And then you see him calm down a little bit, and then uh, I guess follow you guys back inside. Oh, is he now who know who he's out, Gupt? Remind me never to get on your bad side, Gupt. Uh, inside. Bidu starts kind of helping Oric patch up. Um, Gupt is going to keep looking out that window. That he, the broken window that he jumped through. Um, he's just going to be on high alert to see if that thing comes back. Oh yeah, I had a real crazy one last night. And I, I don't know, it was one of those, like, I felt like I was hurting in the dream. And I guess it was that, that thing biting my leg. Why, why you ask? Did you have one? Yeah, real bad. Gup nods and he says, Nightmare. Very bad. You both died. Yeah, I died in mine too. Well, too. This place might be releasing some core sort of like gas or something. You know, it's an old mine. Maybe, maybe they dug too deep. That would explain the explosion and collapse. But also, do you think that monster could have something to do with it? Yeah, man, I, I guess. I, I never, you know, we've been all kind of a, around this this galaxy. I've never seen nothing like that thing. I wonder if it, uh, if it like, lives down and they, like, released it or something. Bullshit. 
hokey religions and ancient traditions. Sing ha huna munga blasta. Ark nods in agreement. Gup smirks a little bit and snorts and says that there are things that I can't understand, but these creatures seem to die if you kill them. He was hurt. I wish I killed him, hit him harder, but I'm much more confident that while I don't understand what it is, we can kill it. Yeah, if it bleeds, we can kill it. Yes, I agree. I think it seemed wreathed in darkness. Maybe if we wait until light, we would have a better chance. Assuming it's still dark out, right? Like it's still night? Yes, you were uh, awoken in the middle of the night, more or less, um, long enough to get in a full rest for the benefits, but it is still dark. All right. Um, just, I have to make a clarification. I'm not retcon that uh, I couldn't do the second attack because it's a bonus action and raging is a bonus action. So that's why I didn't, um, I just normally raged, uh, but I didn't do the path of the berserker, which is, uh, where I do the second melee weapon. Luckily, it didn't hit, so it didn't matter, but they're both bonus actions. Mm. Berserker! I've been not, like, been loosely trying to think of Star Wars-y lyrics for the Berserker song. And yeah. I, 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 <laughs> the uh, real lyrics are quite offensive. I will not go into that. Yeah. Ooh. Dude, do not, there is no try Berserker. <laughs> All right, well, what would you guys like to do? What do you think of well, I don't want to hang out here well, much longer than we got to if we got these little shadow monsters hanging about. Let's let's get on with it and find this this mine and get out of here. Boy. Agreed, but no more sleeping in separate rooms. Your privacy will have to suffer. I sleep in my gear anyway. I ain't got no privacy. Beat of shrugs. While we're kind of um, thinking about this stuff, can, can Bidu kind of like look up the space encyclopedia <laughs> as it were to kind of see like there? i don't know like i mean he's a scientist so curiosities interest him and in things like this but just really like searching he's never encountered anything like this but if there's any kind of data that exists that maybe we could find on the space internet space wiki space wikipedia wikipedia, wikipedia. what what's your passive Passive is 19. It's like amazing. Yeah. So um, you were looking from out the window at quite a distance in at night at a black beast. Um, but you do have a lot of history with the sciences. Um, I saw him in infrared, to be fair. Mm, okay. So um, you can tell that it was um, an organic a natural beast that exists. Um, and you can tell that it is probably silicone based by your best estimates, um, just based on its shape and the way that it moved. It reminds you of other silicone based animals that you may have read or studied about or had colleagues that studied. And um, it doesn't it seems to be well suited for the area. You saw how it used these shadows to move about. Um, however, its construction didn't seem like it was anything else you've seen in the animals and beasts on this moon thus far. Well, if we move forward to hunt these things and delve into that mine, we must stick together and be careful. Where are you guys having this conversation on the second floor of this manor? I imagine it going like Bidu walking downstairs to meet Oric and Gupt as they came in and like they're kind of sitting there cleaning off their gear, patching up, you know, wounds and kind okay. of getting ready to go, but uh so before before you get ready to go um while you're pondering and thinking back about what this beast could have been you remember because of your great perception that upstairs um when gooped was sweeping through the rooms there appeared to be a library 
Oh, there was a library. Cool. Yeah, Bidu would poke around in those books a little bit. Because he wanted to look in the um, the one study that they were in to see if there was any information on the mine that they could use to, like, entry points or just anything that would be useful of that sort. So you go into the library. Of course, there's books everywhere. You can see that um, there's a lot of personal effects in here from the manor owner, and you surmise the matron of the town. Um, you see some more letters signed by Matron Duvizen, which you had seen the previous day in the um, speeches section of the podium downstairs. The shelves hold books of all sorts. There's tomes of history, um, treaties on business, folk tales, grand sweeping novels. There's an entire section on, on arcane theory, books about other planes of existences. Um, and a lot of those seem to focus on the theory of um, force. There's books laying open on the table, and there's notes haphazardly scribbled on papers that have been stuck in different pages, um, pointing to things. Things have been unlined or underlined, circled. Um, someone was doing research here. Bidu takes a moment to kind of scan and look through their notes. Like, what, what have they focused on? What have they honed in on? You see topics jumping out, keywords, um, and it's readily apparent to you that someone was looking at all of these topics, including the effects of physical and emotional trauma, nightmares, uh, also mysterious disappearances and how those things might be connected. And there's seemingly out of place in comparison to the other topics. There is one book about the dark side of the force and its effect on creatures and written on a note on this book says, could this be the answer? Bidu is a very curious Rodian, so curiosity peaked. He looks into that further a little bit. You discover some more notes and things and cross-references and determine that Matron Duvizen seems to have been doing research here in her library on how the dark side of the force can be used and filtered through creatures, one of which stands out as having the most notes. It is a fear knock. The book says that fear knock are corrupted creatures that have been corrupted by the dark side of the force. They spontaneously manifest in response to deep fears in places where the border with the dark side of the force is thin with reality. Fear knocks create more of their kind by transforming any humanoids through a process of psychic torment that can often last hours or days. It also says that they prefer to live in subterranean nests. They are sensitive to bright lights because of this and can sense shadows and darkness, which the author of this book believes is what gives them their deadly ability to hone in to the force. Bidu's like uh, tearing through all of this ravenously. His uh, scientific mind is like reeling from all of these revelations. Uh, he goes down, he, uh, gathers all these up, all these in, into his arms and spills into the other room where Oric and Gupt are and uh, says to them, and he relays the um, what he's kind of inferred from these notes to them. So yeah, they're waiting in the, the bottom of the stairs. You come thumping down um, and explain it all to them. Right in front of a giant mural, you notice by the entryway of a woman, beautiful woman. Um, she seems very important, and she's wearing a snowdrop ring. The plaque says that that is Mayor Duvizen, so you point to that and say, this, this is the woman that has found this research, and I believe she was um, you know, here and figured out what was, what was happening. And when you come downstairs, you hear 
upstairs, the sound of footfalls and claws. Uh, Bidu says to Gupta and Orek, uh, I think they might be back. Gup, do you think you um, see some light flashing outside or something, even though it's the middle of the night in Auric? There's like a really heavy wind blowing. It's making it hard for you to hear anything. You can kind of hear like the shutters of the building kind of shaking and the wind outside. All right, boys, we may want to get away from the windows. That's how it came through last time. Drag me right out. So I don't want somebody reaching in and getting us. Maybe it's in a room and she moves to the center. There's some more footfalls upstairs. It sounds like um, something's pacing towards the staircase. Gupt is going to turn to Bidu. He's going to ask, they, you said they disliked light. Why, why would they, why would there be light out when they, if they're coming? I, I don't think it's them. This is a logical statement. Bidu takes a few moments just to like pause and listen, uh, closes his eyes and uses his Rodian hearing to kind of see what he can discern. All right. Uh, roll a perception check with advantage. Ooh, 22. So you, um, you close your eyes to let your ears take on their full abilities without distraction. You hear um, footfalls upstairs and the sounds of claws scraping as they're lifted up off the ground, um, walking in a circle above you, directly above you. You hear no wind. And when you open your eyes, you see no light. So you think it's getting in our mind and making us hear and see stuff? We do not. Yes, it seems like they do this to turn others into fear knocks. Which is really critical why we need to stick together. I don't want to become one of those, do you? Oh, no, not at all. All right, well, let's, I mean, again, though, we, so the, then are these people that we, that maybe lived in this town, or are these animals? It could be a, a little bit of both. It said they, remember the stories the old man told us that people went missing? Yeah, I do remember. Is he having, was he it seems like there might be a little bit of more, a little bit more truth to these stories. Arik has to kind of, she's talking a little too loud um, over the sound of the wind in her ears, and it's kind of starting to hurt, like a little twinge of headache, and then it just whoosh, cuts out, and you hear creaking on the stairs. Something's coming down here, boys. Peter turns to look, but he's not concerned. Your eyes can deceive you. Don't trust them. Uh, he sends his droid up. Uh, he wonders if they can't deceive technology. or He wonders if they can deceive technology. Sure. You um, When you turn around to look and get a bead on where you're going to see the droid, um, you hear a creak and just through the corner of the banisters, you see um, a, the boot of a Republic soldier. Well, clearly, the, uh, one would not be here and one would not have been able to like sneak up on him. So Bidu is attributing it more to like mind tricks. He's trying to stay level-headed through all this. So you uh, Boy, make so a command to send your droid up Yeah, still? Yeah. So the droid comes um, up the stairs, zips around, and um, finds an empty room. What Nothing. What thing you to do? How do you guys want to move forward? So it's still night time, correct? Yes. I don't really want to go out 
in the wild until suns come up. Does this place got more than one sun? It has two daily eclipses. So more light. more moons than suns. Yeah, I mean, Bidu, after knowing what he knows now, Bidu is inclined to kind of just like hold up against the wall. He's just going to kind of like lay down, kick his feet up, and just wait until the the light starts to creep before they can go. Unless anybody else has a better better idea. Yeah, I think we can. I think we can haul up here better, and we can make any progress out there without getting torn up. Yeah, so he might take a nap. Actually, he's still pretty tired. Yeah, Bidu and Arik are both still exhausted one level you want to go back to sleep for another eight hours yeah. <laughs> i mean if we have to wait for light and he's exhausted and just like having figured this out like i don't know he, now that he knows that there's a thing that's doing stuff like that's identifiable and you can navigate that whereas if it's like it's a it's some kind of a pressing threat that we have no idea what it is like that's disturbing but beauty feels a little bit more at ease so and he's kind of lazy so he doesn't like being tired yeah i don't know if i'm gonna take a a lie down but i don't want to leave here so i think we still need to be on alert because even though we know what they are they can still come in they can still get us he's not too concerned he has his uh count his uh countermeasures set but yeah, if you guys want to just wait until there's more light, we don't have to take another long rest. Yeah. But either way, I think waiting until some we get some semblance of that might Yeah, help. I'd say I'd say it's probably an hour or two at most. Um you would assume until the sun rises again. Or the moon, I should say. Rises? I don't know. Yeah. I guess moons have sunrises. Never yeah. thought about that before. Moon, moon rises. But is that cool with you guys? Just waiting until we get some light and then go? Yeah. Um, I don't know if what rage or anything, but I, I mean, imagine like a short rest. Um, short rest are 10 minutes, but if we got to wait an hour, you know, none of us were really hurt, correct? Like I didn't lose hit points. It seemed like they were no. superficial. You had some superficial wounds, blood, and things on your pant leg and boot, but you didn't take any damage, really. But yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go out there and get ambushed by a bunch of these things in the in the town at night or in the woods. So let's wait till uh, sunrise and then we can head out. Because we ain't far from the mine, so I don't. I don't think it'll take us another day to get there. Okay. So, um, you guys are hanging out there. Um, Bidu's propped himself up in the corner of the stairway. Um, I think he's just continuing. taking a little nap, kind of resting yeah. up. I think he might be like also kind of reading through some of those notes that they found upstairs. It's a good idea. He's studying about the matron Duvizin's research about the fear knocks. Are there any maps of the um, mine in this building? Yeah, so let's see. Search around. While you're waiting, you can just search the rooms. You find some, you know, business papers and things, but um, receipts and things like that are all you find regarding the mine. Nothing that would constitute a, a map um, while you're, you know, digging around, looking, um, Arik, you hear off in the distance a little voice, and um, it's coming from probably, like, where you entered town, past the graveyard, if you remember, um, past the tree, past the graveyard, in that direction. Yep. And it says, hello? Hello? Are you being here? Is Nopi really being there, or is it just another fear knock trick? Oric, Bidu, and Gup steal themselves as they begin their exploration of the ill fated mine. Are they walking into a trap or treasure? Find out next session. Hop into your Discoga issued starship and punch in plus one to gaming.com into your nav system for more live play episodes, character creation tips, and DM resources. Thanks so much for listening, and may the force be with you.